Welcome back, squad. This is your recruiting coach, Quito Delgado. And thank you so very much for tuning in to another episode of the Full Ride College Recruiting Podcast, where every episode, each and every Thursday, our goal is to help our busy families learn the ins and outs of college recruiting while on the go. Because we know, especially this time of year in the summer, you guys are carting around all over the country. You're, you're on the highways and byways. You're in gymnasiums. You're playing in tournaments. You're going to camps. You're playing in showcases. And we just want to provide you with some winning plays that's going to help you um, take full control of your college recruiting process while on the go. So thank you so much for tuning in. And uh, I really encourage you uh, to subscribe to the podcast so you get notified every single time we um, we upload a new episode um, and you can find us on your favorite podcast listening app, including Spotify, Stitcher, Apple podcast, tune in SoundCloud. And you can also, if you want to, um, you can um, listen to us on YouTube, just search out full ride. Um, but um, yeah, we're really excited because today we have a former college athlete and NFL pro joining us. And uh, his name is Legadu Nene, also known as Coach L.A. And uh, families, I need you to make sure you grab a pen, a notepad, and you get dialed in because Coach L.A., he drops some serious game all episode long. And not only does he provide us with some, some great um, strategies for college recruiting, but he's a big time mindset coach um, today, and he really wants to make sure he's providing our our student athletes with the might the right mindset to be um, an athlete. Because simply playing a sport or being on a team does not make you an athlete. It comes with a certain mindset. So I really want you to make sure you're locked in uh, for our interview. Um, but before we get to Coach LA, just want to remind you of two things. One, perhaps you're brand new to college recruiting. Um, you're, you're just about to start the process. So we want to make sure we give you a good foundation. So right in the show notes, the first link is going to be um, avoid these 10 recruiting mistakes. I want you to click on that link, drop us your email, and then our commitment to you is within 24 hours, we are going to send you um, 10 things to avoid doing um, that could potentially cost you um, a full or partial athletic scholarship to college. Um, so hit that link. It's a free resource for you. We'll get that right over to you. But then last but not least, um, we know many of our families, um, you know, perhaps you're a mom, dad, guardian. You didn't play college sports. Here's the reality. Most, most parents didn't. Um, so you've never gone through college recruiting. Um, and obviously you want to be able to be able to help your son or daughter navigate this process. And what we've noticed is too many families are are turning to other families for for guidance and for help. They're they're turning to Google. And I'm not saying it's completely wrong, but I need you to understand something. College recruiting is different for every family. It varies from sport to sport, position to position, your athletic ability, your goals. So this is my long way of saying we truly believe that you need to get customized help. You really should get one-on-one -on -one coaching, um, but we, re we recognize that not everybody can afford to pay thousands of dollars for elite coaching, right? Um, so we have a program that we're running. It's called Study Hall, where you are allowed to email us up to five questions per month, college recruiting questions for your um student athlete, right? Email us the five questions. And then within um, one business day, what we do is we email you back a response via video message. And we include any documentation that any um, supporting documents that you may need. Additionally, we also schedule one 15 minute consultation with you each and every month. So this is study hall. You can stay on the program for as long or as little as you want. It's month to month. Um, and it's just for a very limited time 
through the rest of August, because once September, I'm just once September comes, I'm telling you the price will go up. But for now, it is seventy five dollars a month, and I have people telling me, Coach, that is nuts. You you're giving so much value for so little, and I tell them the reason why I'm doing it is because I want to make sure we can can really help even the playing field for some of those families who may not have the resources and the means to pay, you know, an arm and a leg for some coaching. So $75 dollars are running this through the end of August. Um, so I encourage you, if maybe you are just starting the process, this is a great way for you to get a good foundation, or maybe you're going into your senior year, you really need that boost. Let us help you out. Um, can't guarantee you that we're going to get you a full athletic scholarship, but I can promise you, you're going to be a lot more prepared to take on this process with our coaching and with our guidance. Um, but that's enough of that. Hit those links in the show notes, but without further ado, here is this interview, this week's interview with Legadu Nene, AKA coach LA. I hope you enjoy. Coach L.A., how are we doing today, my man? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. How you doing? I can't complain, man. Um, had some technical difficulties, but we worked it out, and I'm just really happy. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you for your patience, and I'm just happy that you were able to, uh, to join us and, and share some of your, your wisdom with our student athletes and their parents. So why don't you take a few moments, introduce yourself to our listeners, let them know a little bit about yourself, and then uh, we'll, 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 we'll get into it. Okay. Uh, well, my name, my full name is Legadu Nene. Uh, it means good is coming. It's Nigerian. Um, I'm originally from Portland, Oregon. Growing up, I played everything, hockey, soccer, everything. But my, my three favorites that I played were baseball, football, and basketball, all the way through uh, my sophomore year of high school. Um, going through high school, um, you know, with football being the fall sport, that's when all the recruiting letters came, started to come in during my sophomore year. So then from that point, I was like, okay, I'm going the football route. And that's kind of when I cut off of basketball and baseball. But um, all through or growing up playing all three, baseball was my favorite. You know, baseball was my, really my most passionate sport. Um, but just because of the way fall, fall fell, you know, and the recruiting letters coming in, that's how I ended up kind of choosing that football route. Um, I ended up going on to Boise State. Ended up being drafted for, or so at Boise State, you know, we had an awesome run there. Um, I think we lost six games in the five years I was there. My senior year, we won the Fiesta Bowl against um, Oklahoma in the, um, the, the overtime. Um, went for two. So it was, it was an awesome hook and ladder play. All of that that um, people talk about is one of the, the, the most popular college football games in history. So that was awesome to be a part of. After that, I was fortunate to be drafted by the San Diego Chargers, played there for four years, played with the Carolina Panthers, played with the Miami Dolphins. And after football, I transitioned into business. So in San Diego, I live in San Diego still. In San Diego, I have four businesses. And my, um, my passion is really about peak performance. So that's what I do with athletes. I'm a peak performance coach. And I really focus on training my athletes, not only physically, but also, but also mentally conditioning them. So that way, when it's those times where you have to be at your best, or at that time where you know, this is my opportunity where the scouts there and I'm getting my look, you're able to, to not only physically, I mean, not only physically train for that moment, but mentally be locked in because the thing I learned on the NFL level, and especially, you know, as I'm sure we'll get to later through my adversity in college, is that it's a mental game. It's really a mindset game. And so, um, just being able to give athletes that tool and awareness and um, having gone through it and working with um, sports psychologists that work with pro golfers and things like that, I learned some cool stuff along the way. So I just provide those same tools for athletes and I try, I try to, to, sorry. And I try to get it to them um, as early as possible. So that way, just like they're developing their muscle, their skill, their speed, everything they do in their, their skills with their sport, they're developing the mindset so that way by the time they're in high school and it's junior year and it's go time, they're locked in. When they're transitioning into that first year in college, they're able to compete, they're able to lock in. When they're third on the depth chart, they're able to you know, keep that mindset and motivation and have those habits that they need to be able to put themselves in the best position. So that's my passion now and that's really what I help out athletes do. 
and I love that. And I can just tell you right now, I'm, I'm fired up. And I just know that, I mean, there's so many things we can talk about. But one thing you just touched on is mindset. Um, I, you know, we have so many of our student athletes. Um, and I, I, don't get me wrong. You have to work out. You have to put in, you know, the ladders. You got to do your sprints. You got to lift weights. You got to get in the film room, all that stuff. You got to, you know, you got to get your reps in. But I think so many times that they neglect, especially our young athletes, they neglect that mindset. So we're definitely going to to pick your brain um, on that. But let's go back real quick. Could you said something um, early, um, and I, I really want to focus this in, uh, particularly for our parents. Um, you played a ton of sports growing up, yeah. as did I. Um, I didn't play hockey, <laughs> um, but I, I played. I played tennis. I did bowling. I played soccer. I ran track baseball I did all that as well can you just touch on you know what were the benefits to you to playing multiple sports um throughout your 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 young um you know athletic career if you will I think it's I think it's so beneficial to the development of any athlete you know I know that um Odell Beckham talks about how he trains using you know soccer using different things as a pro athlete just to keep that athleticism but as a kid growing up playing baseball, that hand-eye coordination, as I was playing baseball, was one of the things that was a strength for me on the football field. I never dropped passes because I would always catch it. I had great eyes, great hands. Um, basketball, you know, as far as the different competition and things like that, and the different awareness that I gained with, within myself as an athlete, realizing, okay, I'm, I'm 6'2", and I'm, I mean, I'm a good basketball player, but I'm not a D1 guy. You know, I'm seeing these guys, they're 6'5", they're 6'4", they're 6'6", with the handle and all that. So you're able to, to gain more of an awareness of what you bring to the table, um, the things you need to work on, the things that carry over, all of those things that you kind of develop, you know, not only, again, with your skills, but from a psychological and mindset perspective, you just gain so much more insight on the things that you're good at and the things that you struggle at. And, and that really kind of lays the foundation for how you go through your offseason, how you spend your time when you're working on your game. You're able to be very specific about it if you're keened in to, to, to what you need. No, absolutely. And, and one thing I'll even add is I just think it keeps it fresh for you a little bit. I think if, you know, mm -hmm. it's a, a trend that I see, and I'm not knocking parents or our student athletes, you know, it's easy to kind of think um, that you have to do what everybody else is doing, but so many of them are playing baseball or soccer um, year round, right? You know, they're, they're doing all yeah. these travel sports, elite club, and um, there's a time and a place for it. I just don't think it's, there's a time, you know, at eight years old, at nine years old, at 11 years old. Um, I just think now is the time when you're young, um, you know, just to explore, find out what you like, what you're good at, develop the confidence, you know, learn how to compete, have fun. Um, and that's just, you know, one take as well. So, I am interested 100. to see. And a perfect – and another thing, though, that you just also said is earlier was you, baseball was your love. Um, mm -hmm. But baseball, I'm sure maybe you excelled at it, but at the end of the day, um, because you were playing multiple sports, you ended up finding out that football was the path that was going to get you a full ride. <laughs> right. Um, and right. I think – and because I always thought I was going to play basketball in college. But 6'2 shooting guards that can't shoot, aren't all that valuable to college coaches. Mm -hmm. uh, but a six but a six two, six three wide receiver, you know, that has, you know, some decent speed is valuable. So can you just talk on touch on now real quick? Um, when you were going through recruiting, what was your evaluation process like? You know, let's kind of walk through that because obviously, um, first of all, talk about some of the schools that you did you were getting offers from because obviously not all of our families are in your position where you have multiple division one offers, but talk, talk about the schools that you're coming on that you are evaluating and then how you chose Boise state. Yeah. So, um, after my sophomore year, sophomore year was my first year on varsity. I was an all league player. I played receiver that year. Um, but after that year, it started happening. I started getting these envelopes and letters in the, in the mail. And for, at first it was interest. And then it was, you know, inv invitation to camps. It was um, contact information, wanting to, you know, establish a relationship and all those things. So that's how it started. Um, that sophomore year going into my junior year, I ended up switching over to receiver. So yeah, I had all these letters that were at this point, uh, uh, Nike, I had Nike shoe boxes full of letters, but it was as a receiver. It was that I played receiver and corner my sophomore year. So I was getting a lot of um, athlete 
um, scholarship offers. They didn't really have a position for me, but they'd get me there. They'd figure it out. Going into my, my junior year, I then played um, quarterback and I played safety. And there, again, I was an all-league player at both positions. But then again, that brought in a different kind of pool of recruitment. So I got more letters, um, more opportunities, things like that. And I got my first offer my, my junior year from Colorado. But at the time, Colorado brought a little more to the table than they do now. Um, so, yeah, I got my first offer um, my junior year. And then going into my senior year, the same thing. So at that point, I kind of had an awareness that, that people knew who I was. Because the whole time, I, I, was, I, loved, I loved all the sports. I loved football, everything. I did, always did whatever I could. I worked hard. I went to the camps. I did all of that. But once I kind of realized, okay, the eyes are on me, I, you know, going into that senior year, I knew that at these games, potentially there's people sitting in the stands. And if not, they were going to see the film that I was putting out there. So I had that awareness kind of my senior year. Um, going into my senior year, I then got um, almost every Pac-10 school offered me except for SC and I think UCLA. UCLA. Uh, I got off, but all, as, um, all as athletes. I was from Portland, but at the time, University of Oregon and Oregon State, they weren't good teams. So it wasn't as appealing at the time. So um, those, I would say, were kind of the, 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 the hype around as far as my family, my friends. They were like, okay, you can stay home. Are you going to go here? Um, Boise State, um, UNLV, um, those were kind of the ones I was really considering. Portland State, those are the schools that I was considering. And then out of all of the schools out, outside of Colorado, Boise State was the only school that said that we want you to play quarterback and we'll never ask you to play another position. Every other school was like, yeah, they were offering me, but they weren't saying, okay, we want you to play safety. We want you to play receiver, which I, I mean, I could have played any of those, but at that time I was in love with playing quarterback and I saw myself as an NFL quarterback. So that's really, that really drove my decision, you know, and, and why I chose Boise state. The other thing was, um, once I, you know, I went, I was going through that recruiting process and I toured and went down to Boise and kind of saw the, the, the school. I got to meet the coaches. I saw the culture. I saw what they were about. I learned the history and the tradition of what they had gone up, what had been going on there. Um, they were previously a one, one double A school. They won championship after championship. They, they had just moved up to, to one A. And so I think they were in one A three or four years at the time when I was, when I was going to go there. And as they were recruiting me, they had a big game against Fresno State. Fresno State at the time was, I think, number seven in the country. The ESPN game, Boise beat them in Fresno. Um, when they had David Carr and they had all that hype, you know, and all that, that kind of time window. And when I went there, that's when I knew it was going to be the school that, that I was going to go to. I mean, yeah, the, the quarterback thing was driving my decision and was really probably going to ultimately base my decision but it was confirmed when I went there and I saw the culture and I met the guys and I saw what they were about and th their whole kind of mentality and motto was blue collar. You know, at this time they still had those one double A recruits. So all of these guys were hard workers. They had that chip on the, sh on their shoulder when they had these um, at the time pack 10 games, they wanted to win those games because they knew that's how they, they were going to get that exposure and notoriety. So I just fell in love with all of that. And, and that's really what, what aimed my decision. And the funny thing about that is, you know, my, my friends from high school, my family didn't come on that recruiting trip with me. So when people ask her and I'm like, okay, I'm going to Boise. And they're like, you're going to Boise? Like you'd almost hear it like it was a letdown because at the time it wasn't, the, you know, now they have a different name for themselves, you know, based on a lot of things that we did when I was there. But you can't let those outside factors influence your decision you know you're the one that's going to be on campus for that five or four year window you're the one that's going to be working with those coaches day in and day out you're the one that's going to get that piece of paper and walk off with that with that degree and you want to control all of those factors so I think that it's important to to understand and, and take those outside perspectives but ultimately it is your decision and I think that athletes need to really keep that in mind you know at the, at the end of the day when they're making these decisions. No, absolutely. And, and I'll just piggyback on this um, is the fact that, you know, you, you have to focus on, on you, what's important to you. It's mm -hmm. your, it's your future. It's your, um, you know, it's your window of opportunity to, to play at a high level um, and most importantly, earn an education. Um, so I, I'm so glad you mentioned that you can't get tied into, Oh, what's this person going to say? What's, Oh, they never heard of school. Um, yeah. you, know, you know, all that, all that, cause that's all noise. Right. 
Um, so I really mm-hmm. like that you said that. Um, but real quick, just going back, I don't want to spend too too much time on this because I want to get to other things as well. But you mentioned at the very beginning you were getting stacks of um, prospect notes in the mail, Nike shoe box full of mail, um, letters. Can you mm-hmm. touch on how did you know when you went from you know, the term is perspective student athlete, you know, so on the radar, kicking the tires, they're quote unquote interested in you. How did you know when you went from a prospective student athlete to a full on recruit? What, what was the shift, you know, as far as the communication between the coaches and you and your family? Can you remember? Not, I can't a hundred percent like, this was the point. Um, let me, let me but, reframe but, it then. Hold on, hold on. Let me reframe it. So I'm assuming when you first got, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I'm assuming when you first started getting letters, there were these standard letters um, that they were sent out to all the kids. Um, there were basic, you know, fill out this form, you, you submit it. But was there, you know, phone calls, um, handwritten notes, um, personal invitation to camps. Did you experience all that? Like, how did that, what was that shift from oh, like, wow, like they really feeling me right now. I, okay. They, they are, they are recruiting me. They're not just kind of, you know, throwing me random letters that they send to all the kids. I, I think the, the, the real probably awareness came from my high school head coach. Cause I think that they started to contact him. Mm-hmm. And so he was starting to say, okay, Oh, we got so-and-so coming around. So he was kind of like feeding me the information. Um, so I think that's probably when I really knew, but, but my real goal was always to play in the NFL. Like that was my goal. So like the college whole, the, the recruiting thing, you know, like I know a lot of these guys nowadays, they get hyped on, I was offered by here and that, and you know, I wasn't really like, I didn't play that whole game. I wasn't, that wasn't the game I was playing. I was, I was really focused on getting to that next level. So I wasn't really, I mean, I think that it really happened from that head coach kind of information and him really putting me on and and really make like saying, okay, you have a huge opportunity in front of you here. How are you going to handle it? No, absolutely. And just uh, what I'll just say to that, add to that is because you just, you definitely just made, um, gave a great nugget. Many of our families listening come, because again, obviously all the props to you, my man, you know, you had a lot of options, a lot of power five options um, that were, that were coming your way. so that just shows, you know, our listeners how, uh, how elite of a recruit. And then obviously you went on to play in the league. Um, you were. But for all of the rest of you who aren't at that level, maybe you're D2 talent, NAIA talent, D3 talent. The, the, the signs aren't going to be as crystal clear to you. You're getting these letters potentially in the mail. Maybe you get a generic email and you think you're being recruited. No. L- Coach L.A. just said it his college, his high school coach. So the college just started calling his high school coach saying, Hey, what's your practice schedule? Oh, when's his game? So they want to come see him. So that is one sign for you. When the college coaches Mm -hmm. start calling your high school coach or when they start coming to your high school to visit you, you start getting phone calls. Now they're calling you directly. You're getting handwritten Mm -hmm. or, you know, personalized, notes in the mail. Now maybe they're sliding into your DM and, and, and talking to you. So you have to know when you're going from a prospective student athlete to actually being recruited. And Coach LA, I love what you just said about, oh, they, just, they were contacting my coach, my high school coach. That's also a, a definitely a great one. So I want to transition yeah. a little bit um, more so to the mindset, but clearly you went to the NFL, you clearly excelled athletically, um, right? But from a what, is, what are some of the traits that you saw? Because now you're at the elite of the elite, right? Mm-hmm. You're, you're at that big stage. You're around hall of, you know, future Hall of Famers, all pro type players, and even coaches, you know, great minds. Can you share with our, our student athletes, um, you know, just a few, I mean, I'll let you kind of freestyle here, like a few nuggets that you noticed. Like what are some of the characteristics, um, some of, what, what's the mindset that elite performers have? Um, not just at the NFL level, but really just if you want to get to that level, what are some of the mindset um, tips that you want to recommend to our student athletes? Well, the first, the first thing that I'll say, and I think it's probably the most important thing to understand is that these guys in the NFL, they're not the best guys. 
that I ever played against. They're not some of the best athletes that I ever saw. So there's kind of this perception like, oh, you got to be, you got to be a four, two guy and you got to be six, four, two, ten. You got, it's not really like that. And, and that's, you know, like I kind of went through a, 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 a mindset shift in college, but when I came my rookie year to the NFL, that's the, the first clear cut thing that I saw. So like growing up, you know, you always like wonder, okay, what's it like in the league? What, what is it, you know, what's it about? And so when I got there, the first thing that I saw and, you know, everybody talked about the word mindset, but your mindset is really how you respond to everything you experience, how you, when something happens to you, everybody has a story that they tell themselves. They think about something and then they, they create a story or a narrative about that. So if I'm third on the depth chart, I can create the story that the other guys are better than me. I can create the story that uh, the coach doesn't like me. That's why I'm third, that I'm not getting the opportunity, or I could focus my mindset on doing the things to, to address the reasons why I'm third on the depth chart. So your mindset is how you respond to everything you experience. So with that, your mindset then directly impacts your habits. So the thing I saw with elite have with elite per, the, the guys in the pros, what separated the Hall of Famers from, from the guys that were cut in a year, what separated the guys in college that I knew that had it and got the opportunity and they never made it, the thing that separate them, separated them was the habits that they had tied to their mindset. So everybody can do it at a high level when they're feeling it, when everything's going gravy, when it's all good. But what separates the, the, the pros from everybody else, is like I like to say, is that on those days where you're at 70%, that pro mentally is going to push themselves to max out that 70%. They're not going to let themselves just drop down to 40 because they're not feeling it. They're going to have, they have high quality habits every single day that, that directly impact their performance. The, se- the, the next thing that I saw um, that separates the guys that, the, the, the separator from that high school player to college player is, is very thin. It's very thin, and a lot of it is with this mindset stuff. With, with the guys that got to that pro level and had this type of mindset that I'm talking about, they're all obsessed with becoming their absolute best, obsessed about it. And that's really the game on the pro level because your livelihood depends on being able to show up every single day and play at a high level. You know, on the pro level, you're not just getting critiqued on Sunday. You're getting critiqued on that Tuesday practice, on that Wednesday practice. On that Thursday, you know, so like if you're dropping balls during the week, you'll be cutting out of there and they'll have somebody else in there before Sunday even happens. So on that pro level, you have to mentally put yourself in the position to every day you step on the field, be at your best and have your peak performance. So I think that's really the, the, the difference. And I, I think the one thing that, that affects a lot of younger athletes and guys that don't have this mindset is that they allow the things that happened previously to affect how they prepare. So I, 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 I'm starting to get these recruiting letters. I'm starting to feel like I've arrived. What happens? Does it affect your, your preparation? Are you still going about it the same way? Because just because you, you went from um, prospect to recruit, if you don't continue to, to apply yourself and do the things you need to do to continue to elevate your game, you're going to get passed off the list or you're, you're, you, may not, you might not even get that offer. So we can't let the, okay, I'm not getting these offers. I'm not getting these letters. Does that affect, okay, well, maybe football's not for me. Maybe I need to, you know, it can't affect your mindset. If you know that that's what you want to do and that's what your goal is, we need to figure out what we need to do to get that goal, get that goal accomplished. So it's that mindset piece that is the thing that separates the pros from the Joes. It, it, it's real. No, and that's this real game right there. And Whew, I'm like, I'm like taking notes over here, man. <laughs> so no, that, that is, that is awesome. So, you know, I follow you on, um, on Instagram and by the way, and, and I'm going to put all of coach LA's information in the show notes. So don't worry guys, but game elevated. Um, that's game elevated on Instagram. You guys definitely have to follow him, but I'm reading your bio right now, even. And you say every athlete's game has a next level. Yeah. What do you What do you mean by that? That directly goes to kind of that whole thing about not letting that previous performance affect your preparation. So every single day, like the Mamba mindset's a great example of this, right? Mamba mentality. You hear these stories about Kobe when he was at that USA training with the USA team. He called this guy to come meet him at the gym at 3 a.m. The guy shows up at 3 a.m. Kobe's already in a full sweat. 
Kobe's already been MVP of the league. He's already won four rings. He's already done all this stuff, but he still realizes that his game has the next level. And think about that. He's at the, he's at the top in the NBA. He's one of the top three guys in the NBA at the time. But he realizes my game has a next level. That's the mindset and approach he took to his preparation. So if the, if the best guys, and, and there's countless examples of guys like this, Michael Jordan, LeBron James, a great example. Russell, Williams, uh, Russell Wilson's a, uh, a current example of this. Um, Tom Brady's a great example. But if you re- like, these are the guys that are at the top of their game at the, t- at the highest level, and they're still looking for those ways to, get, to reach that next level that, that they realize that their game has. No, that's, that's absolutely, um, I love that stuff. Again, I want everyone to go to your Game Elevated um, Instagram page. Um, but again, another thing that I saw a couple of weeks back, I think um, you talked about, and I actually shared it, I believe, um, either on my story, or I think I even reposted it because it was fire. Um, but for those who didn't see it, um, can you explain and then some? I think this is really important as well um, for, um, and again, my goal, you know, with you recruit you in, in this podcast. Yeah. If, if your goal is to go pro, Hey, go pro a hundred percent. I'm rooting for you, but our mission is to help you take control of college recruiting. So you can get to that next, to that next level. So you can have access to an education, to a network, to resources, um, and then use those life skills to, if you don't go pro and you decide to become an entrepreneur or a doctor, or you become, and you start a family, you can take all these life lessons along the way that you learn yeah. from being a student athlete. That's our mission. Now, yeah. in order to go to the pros though, you do have to go to college, <laughs> but, um, yeah. so, so a lot of stuff that you're talking about coach LA applies, not just for sports, but really your, your, your whole life. But can you talk your about, approach, yeah. yeah, hundred percent. Can you talk about though? And then some, I think it's really powerful. Um, and I don't want to butcher, I just rather you just kind of, um, you know, explain what does and then some mean, and then I'll follow it up just before I forget the question. Um, explain the difference um, between working out and training. Cause I love that yeah. one too. All right. Okay. Yeah. So, so you're in then some, especially as young athletes, you know, we think that we're working hard, right? We're, we're doing the two hour practice. We're working that extra hour with our, uh, sports specific coach or our trainer. Um, we are playing on that travel team. We're doing all these things and it's, it's a lot of effort. I'm working hard. I'm doing all this, which the thing about the end then some is, is that you have to realize that everybody's doing that, that everybody wants it just as bad as you do that, that how, how are you going to create that advantage for yourself? So a few ways you can look at it is, um, one way I, I give an example for athletes is, okay, if you were competing against yourself, how would you beat yourself? Because obviously, you know, your strengths and your weaknesses. So you know that, okay, well, you show up to practice when practices start. Okay, so I'm going to show up 15 minutes early. I would, that's one way I get an advantage. I would say 15 minutes late. Okay, well, you don't watch film. I'm going to watch film. So that's one way to kind of figure out what your and then some is. But basically when you're at practice, like the, the thing that everybody, the things that everybody do, everybody works out in the, in the weight room. Everybody goes to class. Everybody goes to practice. Everybody watches film. Like those are kind of the standards that everybody does. Everybody kind of spends the same amount of time on it. So how are you going to get your advantage in those blocks right there that you have to get your advantage in those blocks first before you get your advantage in the off time. So when you're at practice, what's going to be your and then some? Um, how are you going to get more out of the practice that you're having than your competition is? That's what your and then some is. Okay, when I'm watching film, what's my and then some? Am I going to sit in the film room and take every coaching point that's being told to the receivers? Or am I only going to get the coaching point that's directed to me? That's an and then some opportunity. Practices. Okay, do I show up to practice and leave when practice ends? Or do I show up to 50, practice 15 minutes early, already ready to go, gloves, cleats done, with a regimen that's going to set me up to have my best practice possible? After practice, if I'm making mistakes in practice or there's something I'm not getting or I drop the pass in a practice, am I going to address that before I go home? Am I going to get reps on that weakness that I just spotted that I had? Or am I going to just walk off the field with everybody else? Because that's what everybody's doing. That's an opportunity to get your and then some. Your recovery. You know, every, the things that everybody does, just figuring out what are you going to do in that aspect of your preparation that your competition isn't willing to do, and then making sure that you consistently do it 
in every aspect of your preparation. No, that's, that's awesome. Before we get to the difference between working out and training, um, I do want to piggyback that. So now again, just kind of tying in the whole college recruiting, mom, dad, student athletes that are listening to this, you can apply and then some to recruiting because everybody wants to become recruited and everybody tends to go to camps. They show up, they get their work in and then they leave. But your and then some could be, Oh, I want to go to this camp. I'm going to reach out to the coach beforehand and try to establish a relationship with him or her. I go to the camp and while everybody's kind of off to the side goofing around, I'm trying to get some extra advice, some one-on-one -on -one time with, with a coach and an instructor. That's your and then some. Then once I leave, I send a handwritten note to the coach and say, hey, coach, really had a great time at the camp. Thanks so much for, for taking that extra time um, to chat with me and help me improve my game. That's your and then some. Or a lot of, co a lot of kids, they, they're waiting for letters to come in the mail. Well, no, your and then some is I'm going to send my own letters directly to coaches. I'm going to call coaches. I'm going to um, send them direct messages on Instagram and on Twitter. You have to create those opportunities. That's your and then some when it comes to college recruiting. So I just love, absolutely love um, that term. Um, we got two more things, you know, I want you to hold um, on, hold on. I got a nugget. I got a nugget for these guys for, for, oh. for college recruiting. Oh, please, please share. So, Let's go. Yeah. So you're and then some, so you're sending these DMS, you're, you're, you're sending these emails, you're writing these letters, all these things. So here's what your and then some is in that, in that category, do some research on the program. Mm, say know, that again. Who, know, know who you're talking to, know who your position coach is, know what the philosophy of the program, know, Okay, watch the game. Coach, I love how you have I love how your receivers play. I would I would I will add value to your team because I play the same, you know, whatever it is. But let let these coaches know what you're going to bring to the table. A lot of times with this with this recruiting with the re recruiting stuff, you know, we think that as the athlete and I went through this firsthand, so I'm I'm speaking from being there. We kind of sit back and we think that they're got to come find us. Yep. But really, we can we can go find them. We can pursue Ooh. them, and we can we can pursue the person and the opportunity and the scheme or whatever school you want to go to, based on doing that little thing, knowing the little slogan of their program, go go blue, whatever oh. it is. But if we're just if we're just copy and pasting and doing everything else, remember, like I said, that's what everybody's doing. Yep. So we got to we got to do that, and then some with these letters, and and separate yourself with these letters because I think it's a huge opportunity. You're already taking the effort. To, to reach out to that coach and put yourself out there, go that extra mile, do that homework, know who you're talking to, know how to spell his name, everything that goes into it. You know, you have to be professional about this because you remember they're investing in you. They're giving you a $40,000 a year college scholarship and opportunity. And at the end of the day, that this is one thing that nobody talks about. Their jobs really depend on your performance. So they want to bring athletes in that they feel are going to come in and be a part of the mission that they have going on. They don't want guys that are going to come in, get their college scholarship, and then just go off the train and do whatever they want to do. They want to invest in guys that are going to invest in the program. So separate yourself, uh, uh, separate yourself from the competition when you're writing these letters. Do your homework, do your due diligence, and come across you know, professionally. Whew. And by the way, people, I do apologize. Cause I'm in the background. You may have heard some noise, but like I was getting so – so hyped with you saying that because they, oh, that was so good. I mean, and I, I preach this with our family, with my families when I work in a one on one and stuff. Um, don't get me wrong, but like, it's just so reassuring when you hear somebody else say it. And the recruits, parents, you got to understand. Um, I don't want to go too far down this, but like the psychology of the recruiting, um, people, coaches have egos too, <laughs> they have egos. And Part of this is, hey, yes, you do want to be authentic. I'm not saying, you know, be disingenuous, you know, be fake and all that. But if you're authentic and you show enthusiasm about their program, if you've shown that you've taken the steps to learn about their systems, maybe you reach out to defense. If, you if you're a defensive end, you reach out to a defensive coordinator, say, hey, coach, I really want to be part of your unit because I love the fact that you guys led the league in sacks. Like that, mm. little, that little line shows them like, oh, this isn't a random cut and paste email. They actually care about our program. They have a, a sincere desire to learn more 
about our program. And then what it shows is then you can take it the next step. Another and then some is you can say, I love your scheme. I love that you guys want to spread offense. I think I can really, if you're a wide receiver, I can fit in in the slot and, you know, and create mismatches with the lineup. Whatever the case may be, we'll get into the weeds here. But that is such, um, you know, a powerful statement that you just said there, Coach L.A. So thank you uh, for sharing that. But, yeah, if you're going to send these emails, take the extra time to research and personalize them. Um, mm-hmm. I want to ask you earlier, and then we'll let you run um, before we do your winning play. But before we do, take an opportunity um, because – I know our families are getting so much value out of this talk. I've already mentioned your, your Instagram page game elevated. That's at game elevated. Very simple. But what's your website? How can we, we find you um, for any families that want to, to work with you, train with you, just take an opportunity because you have delivered such great value. I want you to give a chance to promote yourself a little bit, your services. And if they want to connect with you, how can they go about doing so? Yeah, so um, Game Elevated, the Instagram. Uh, my website is www.game-elevated.com. That's going to be the best opportunity. Um, join the family is what I call it. Every month I kind of share tips, things that you can kind of use in your little process, things that you can apply right away. So that's you know where I have my programs, all my information, my free resources, and, and really – my goal is to help athletes achieve their dream, whether it's to go D1, whether it's to get that college opportunity or whether it's to go pro, you know, every athlete, you know, wants to be able to, to it feels good to play good. You know, every athlete wants to experience that. So that's really my passion. Yeah. So definitely connect with coach LA. Um, I know, um, especially you're in Oregon, correct? Are you still in Oregon? I, I'm in San Diego, San Diego. Okay. That's what I thought. Yeah. yeah. So you're in San Diego. So particularly if you're in San Diego, you want to get some in-person work, um, for sure. But then um, for all of you who are, you know, spread out throughout the country, definitely recommend still um, connecting with him. Um, Cause and I'm a big believer. We all need coaches. So if maybe you want a mindset coach, um, I, I highly encourage you to connect uh, with coach um, in that regard. So get you out of here on the last two things. Briefly just describe the difference between um, working out and training. Um, but then lastly, um, as tradition on, on, um, on full ride, I want you to um, leave our families, our recruits with a winning play that's going to help elevate them, whether it's a college recruiting winning play or a mindset winning play. I'll let you pick, um, but I want you just to kind of, I want to plant that in your head. But first, just describe the difference between working out and training. Okay, so working out is so let's start with training. So when you're training, you're, you're preparing yourself for an end result or for an optimal end result. So if you think about you're going to prepare yourself to run a triathlon, you're going to prepare yourself for the NFL combine or for, for an uh, exposure camp, right? You're going, you need to be training to, to prepare yourself for that opportunity because um, one thing that a lot of athletes don't know is you can be a fast, I can be fast, but if I'm not training to run that 40 fast, I'm not going to be fast when I run the 40 and, and that can be my opportunity right there. So, so when you're training, you're, you're, everything in your process should be aimed at addressing your movement inefficiencies and enhancing your strength. So everything in your preparation, when you're training, that's what it's designed to do. You're, you're starting out with, okay, first, this is where we are. You're outlining, these are the things that we're going to address. And then you're going to have a process through your training, through the coaches you work with, through the regimens that you complete that are going to address those weaknesses and enhance those strengths. So that's what happens when you're training. When you're working out, you're going through a routine is a great way to say it. So when you're working out, your friend, your, your, my, my high school quarter, my, my quarterback in high school calls me up. Let's go throw some balls. At the, let's get some balls in. Okay. So we go, we go through the route tree a couple of times. We throw a couple of balls. We go home. So that's a workout. Yeah. Did we spend time? Did we work hard? We probably did. If we're training, that same high school quarterback is going to call and say, okay, let's work on third down. Let's work on our red zone. Let's work on our two minute or our no huddle. Let's work on passes on the left. Let's, you know, so you're, you're, you're really more segmented into it and you have a, a, a process that's addressing every aspect of your preparation. When you're working out, you can miss things that you need to be addressing because you're just doing a great example is when athletes train where their friends are training or because they see somebody's training there, they start training there. I mean, depending on what you're, 
there's a great coach for a lot of athletes. And so it's just about finding the person that can help you address your weaknesses. So it doesn't have to be this facility or that facility or this coach. It's about being able to figure out and, and find somebody to help you figure out where you're at and what you need to get to where you're trying to go. So that's really the difference between working out and training. With training, you're very specified in what you're doing to get that end goal. And I'll just add, um, it sounds like training is, is just very deliberate, very intentional. It's an intentional, mm -hmm. intentional action, um, intentional mindset with an intentional result in mind. So I love that, that you shared that. So why don't you leave us with a, uh, a winning play, my man. I just want to, again, thank you uh, for joining us. I hope our, our families um, gain value. Uh, we, we covered a lot of ground um, in a short yeah. period of time. Um, so I really want to um, just, again, thank you on behalf of all of our, our, our squad, as I call them. Um, thank you on, on behalf of our squad for taking the time. But want you to take a, an opportunity to give our families uh, this week's winning play. Winning play. Um, so I would say that the, for my winning play, I would say it's especially at this stage in that high school, sophomore year, freshman year, junior year, even up to your senior year about establishing and really defining what your brand is. What are you about? What do you bring to the table? How do you, you know, defining what your momentum is going to be? All of those things really go into what your brand is. And the reason that's so, like, even the simple, your, your simple social media profile, um, so many athletes will, will DM me and say, hey, what do you, can you take a, a look at my film? You know, what do you think? So I go to their profile and a lot of times these guys will have, I'm a musician at their top or, you know, like all these things. It's like you're, you're trying to say you want to be, you're an athlete. When you're an athlete, especially a college athlete, that's your title. So, so you're, put, you're putting up these mixed messages. So really being defined and clear cut on what your brand is. And the important thing about both your brand is once you define what it is, you need to make sure that all of your actions, all, everything you do goes clearly in line with that brand. Um, your coaches, a lot of, a lot of athletes miss this, miss this with their coaches, right? You're so focused on what this college co coach is going to say when they see you, or you're hoping that they see them, but little do you know, the first person they're going to call is that high school coach and your high school coach doesn't believe in you. He doesn't think you work hard. He doesn't think that you're applying yourself. He doesn't think you have it, you know? So when you don't, when you're clear on your brand, your high school coach is going to believe in what you have going on. He's going to go to bat for you to speak for, to coaches when they come in. He's going to pick up that phone for you and call people to get those, get those coaches in there. Um, when, you're, when you're clear on your brand, your opposing coaches that you're playing against are going to see you. They're going to, you're going to stand out. When you're doing what you say you're going to do consistently and you're clear about what your brand is, when you play another team, that coach is going to know who you are. When you have that brand and that brand identity, after the game, you go shake that coach's hand, you introduce yourself. You know, you want to expand your network. Um, when you have that brand, and this is one big, big, big one for, for my high school guys, because, because really in high school, exposure is the name of the game. So focus on jumping off the film every single play. And it sounds very simple, but here's the simple fact, is that there's a lot of times, and I know personally from my, my friends that are coaching now, they'll be watching a film or a game tape of somebody else, and there's another athlete that will make a few plays, and all of a sudden they're like, wait, who is that guy? So focus on, and it's not always because they were the, the one shining with the catch or with that. Sometimes it's because they're blocking somebody all the way to the ground, or sometimes it's because they ran 30 yards down and chased the guy down and made that play and didn't just give up on a play, or it's because they played on special teams and they're standing out because everybody knows that most high school teams don't put their best players out there. So if I'm a high school guy that's trying to jump off the film, I'm on all special teams. I'm going to shine on special teams. I'm going to get my first look there and I'm going to expand from there. That's another nugget. But really being clear cut on what your brand is, what you bring to the table, what you're about, and then making sure that everything that you do aligns with that. Because they're going to come and talk to your coaches. They're going to come and talk to your teachers. And it's competitive. There's a lot of athletes that bring it to the table. So they're looking for that one strike in a lot of cases. Sometimes, you know, that one pass through that they're doing through your school is your opportunity and you don't want them walking out of there with a black eye because you don't show up to class because you don't turn in your homework or whatever the thing is that, that, that holds a lot of people back. But when you're jumping off the film, the one thing I know about good coaches is that they usually watch, yeah, they'll watch that highlight tape, but they're going to pull up that full game tape. They're going to see you in action in about three games. One might be your best game. And two might be your worst. 
and they want to see that effort every single play. So if you focus on just establishing your brand and really being, you know, focused on jumping off the film every single play, you can put yourself in the best opportunity to get that exposure and, and really kind of pursue that dream, get into that college level. That is awesome. That is one heck of a winning play. Families, I hope this episode was helpful to you. Now do your part. Be a good teammate and share. Share this with your, your teammates. Share this with other um, parents um, and even family members. But the goal here is to really spread knowledge um, so that all of you can jumpstart and take control of the college recruiting process. So please share this episode um, on social media or text the link or email the link, whatever the case may be. But until next time, this is your college recruiting coach, Chito Delgado, reminding you that college recruiting starts with you. What steps are you taking today to earn an athletic scholarship tomorrow?